Please turn with me for the New Testament reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 down to 31. When you have it, could we all stand if you are able? First Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 down to 31. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and bring to nothing the understanding of the proof. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the dispute of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, and the things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. <coughs> that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And may God send a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his holy word. The sermonic hymn, number 357. Christ arose. And I'm going to ask you again, please politely, if you are able, could we all stand? For directly following will be the message from Reverend Ray Clark.
Jesus, my Savior, He tore the bars away. Jesus, my Lord, from the grave He arose with a mighty cry among His foes. Eternal God and our Heavenly Father, this morning we thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for raising your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead. And this morning we thank you that because of his resurrection, we can boast in the salvation of your grace. We ask you now to bless your word to our hearts as we look into your word. We ask that you would draw, we would draw from your word this morning and we will be fortified spiritually. Bless everything that shall be said and done in the rest of this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. What a beautiful Sunday morning this is today, this resurrection morning, as we come into God's house. Please turn with me. I just want to take a brief moment to extend to you all my gratitude. You know, God has blessed this church tremendously. We have preachers. I heard some preaching on Good Friday, man. Oh, yes. I heard some preaching in here. I heard evangelistic preaching. I heard expository preaching. And I can now sit back. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Elder Johns. Thank you, Brother Williams. I hear him preaching better than Billy Graham now <laughs> on Friday. Thank you, Pastor Lloyd. Thank you, Sister Duncan. Thank you, Sister Malcolm. Thank you, everybody. I'm not going to start calling names before I get in trouble. But everybody has contributed to the well-being of this church and in one way or another. And God has strengthened this church in such a wonderful way that we must give him thanks and praise and glory. All the glory belong to him today. You know, I get called from Jamaica to, was it two Sundays ago? Somebody called me and said, wait. You have a wonderful thing going on there in Queens. You know? And was giving high review to Pastor Lloyd. You have a good assistant pastor there. He's doing great. You know? And so we thank God for the provisions that he has made for this church. Amen? So everybody here, continue, keep up the good works. I promise not to be long. I promised my doctor that. I, he said, what are you gonna do for the rest of your life? He said, what plans do you have for the rest of your life? I said, just to preach the gospel. He says, oh, that's a lot of standing and long talking. 
I said, well, I promise you I won't be doing much of that. But I don't know what the Holy Spirit wants, so I'll be obedient to Him. Turn with me to John chapter 20 today. Turn with me to John chapter 20 today. John chapter 20, and I'll be reading the first 18 verses. When you are there, say amen. amen. The first day of the week cometh Mary. In the original language it says, On the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulchre. And he stooping down and looking in saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre and seeth the linen clothes <coughs> lie. And the napkin that was about his head was lying with linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again, unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and she had two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had laid. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back, and she saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary, Mary, She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not as yet ascended unto my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. My title is a little strange this morning. But we're going to look into that. Whose fool are you? Whose fool 
are you? This Easter falls on April Fool's Day. And this is a very rare thing to happen. Since the year 1700, Easter had land, has landed on this day of the year only 11 times. Only 11 times in 318 years. It is unusual. So, what a weird calendar event but we're going to use it as a great opportunity to ask ourselves a good question. Whose fool am I? The last time Christians celebrated Easter on April 1, was 1956. 62 years ago. When the world was much different from what it was, from what it is now. I won't tell you how old I was then. But I'll tell you that this is the second time it has happened since I've been born. And it might not happen again unless God gives me quite a few more years in answer to my family's prayer. Because the next time this will happen will be about 2029 20, and 2040. And then it won't happen again until 2170. So most of us sitting here today might not see another Easter Fool's Day. Amen? Amen. Another April Fool's Day coming on Easter Sunday. Therefore, since Easter falls on this April Fool's Day this year, today, since it has been 62 years since the last conjunction of April Fool's Day and Easter, this fascinating coincidence begs us and it begs that we notice and mention it. April Fool's Day sometimes called All Fool's Day is an unusual celebration in some European and Western countries. I remember as a little boy, we played terrible tricks. People were made to get up out of their bed early and go to places for no reason at all. And then the perpetrator would shout, April Fool, I got you. So April Fool is commemorated on April 1 by playing practical jokes and spreading hoaxes and the jokes and their victims are called April Fools. People playing April Fools jokes often expose their prank by shouting <coughs> April Fool at the unfortunate victims. Some newspapers, magazines, and other published media reported fake stories. I guess the president of this country has had April Fool's Day for the whole year of his reign because he's been shouting fake news all year. They are usually explained the next day or below the news section in smaller letters. But although popular since the 19th century, 
the day is not a public holiday in any country. So typically a prank is, is pulled or played on a person who is unaware that it is April 1. And when the prank is completed and the fool humiliated, then the perpetrator would always yell, April Fool. So there's the caramelized onion prank. Who here has had caramelized apple? Let me see you hand. Caramelized apple. My wife always made them for the children. They used to love it. So what they would do is they would caramelize the onion and dip it in the caramel and poke a stick in it, then serve them to co-workers and friends and when they bite into it they would realize it's not an apple. The BBC once broadcast a short documentary in a current affairs series purporting to show Swiss farmers picking freshly grown spaghetti. Did you hear what I said? They showed it on the BBC television. Farmers picking freshly grown spaghetti. I hope you get that. In what they call the Swiss spaghetti harvest. The BBC was later flooded with requests to purchase spaghetti plants, forcing them to declare the film a hoax on the news the next day. Let me see the hand of those who've seen a spaghetti plant. <laughs> April Fools made that call. Today is Easter, and this is unarguably the highest and most holy day of the Christian calendar. It can't get holier than this. And since it is April 1, we have to ask, after all, who is the April Fool? A whole slew of candidates come to mind from the scripture we read in John chapter 20 this morning. Is the April Fool Pontius Pilate? The Roman procur procurator, he was the one who covered, who, who was coward. He was the one who stood behind and tried to listen to the people and tried to do what they wanted him to do. He was the one who did not want to offend the high priest or the governor or Caesar. He was the one who didn't want to offend anyone who wanted to deal with the treasonous villain called Jesus. Because he would not be viewed favorably by Rome. I think we have some April Fools like that today. They're standing in pulpits all over the world trying not to offend anybody. Trying to be politically correct.
You know, when I read the story of Saul, as God sent him to destroy the Amalekites, one of Saul's problems was that instead of listening to the commandment of God, he listened to the people. He listened to the people. Pilate was the one who washed his hand of the whole affair. As if he could wash away his guilt with mere water. He permitted the execution. He not only permitted it, but he allowed it to happen in the name of the Emperor of Rome. But then, hallelujah, it's Easter Sunday and Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. Sorry, Pilate, you April fool. Perhaps the disciples are the April Fools. There is no doubt that many of the disciples felt foolish. As the crucifixion approached, they abandoned their leaders. Their leader, they went in hiding. They cowered away. They went away and they hid themselves. They had given up their jobs for this Jesus. But now he's taken away and being tried. And his very life is in jeopardy. And what did his friends do? They ran away and hid themselves. Yes, there have been witnesses to some phenomenal events. Jesus gave sight to a blind man. Jesus loosed the demoniac. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Jesus raised up Peter's mother-in-law who was at the point of dying. Jesus had done some phenomenal things. The woman with the issue of blood was healed by Jesus. The centurion's daughter was healed without Jesus even being present. He was told not even to bother come because she is now dead. And Jesus went in and called her by name and lifted her up. And said, young lady, get up. As a matter of fact, when he went there, some of them began to laugh at him. And he had to empty the room. He says, you get out. Get out. Let me do my work. Yes. They could not imagine those things then and they could not explain them. They had pinned their hopes and their futures to a man they believed would liberate them. He would overthrow Roman government. He would take away the whips of the slavery. And he would have equitable distribution of wealth and power. And now he was being led away as a lamb to the slaughter. So what the disciples did, they went home, they abandoned him, they denied him, they betrayed him, and they wanted to forget him. But now it's Easter morning, and Jesus is risen, April Fool's.
Perhaps the April Fool is Annas, the high priest. And his son-in-law, Caiaphas. Annas is a dark human being and a human figure in this Holy Week drama. He has corrupted witnesses. He has falsified evidence. He placed a mole inside Jesus' inner circle and he tracked the movements of this radical insurgent and he bided his time. But now with Passover approaching, he must make sure that Jesus is dead and buried and it must happen quickly. He pulls the strings. He plays Pontius Pilate like a fiddle. He gets what he wants. But now, Annas, it's Easter morning. And Jesus is risen. April Fools. Perhaps April Fools are the soldiers guarding the tomb. They have to feel, you have to have some empathy for these fellows this morning. They are simply cogs in the Roman industrial military complex. They've got guard duty in a cemetery. It doesn't come worse than that, does it? Better they were on the beat. <coughs> they must have been caught drinking and playing dice. Or perhaps they inadvertently allowed a prisoner to escape their custody. <coughs> so now as humiliating punishment, They've been sent to the tombs to guard dead people. <laughs> they are good. They are decent chaps. They are ordinarily common. They follow orders. They are guarding a dead person. The teasing for them in the bar down the road must have been brutal. It must have been hard on them. Now it's Easter morning. And Jesus is risen. April Fools. Perhaps the April Fool is Peter. He's a commercial fisherman. Peter started out enthusiastically as Jesus called him. He was on fire. No doubt. He felt like he was going to take the world like a storm. He defended his rabbi right and left. He was the one who identified Jesus as the Christ, the son of the living God. He swore never to abandon his Lord. He even drew a sword against the soldier of Rome, of the Roman security forces. And he nearly decapitated one of them. But his swing missed cut off the soldier's ear, not his head. But then Peter loses faith faster than a rock sinks in water. When Jesus at last is captured and led away from Gethsemane, he denies he ever knew the man and the person who said he would never leave Jesus leaves 
he came to the tomb he saw the empty tomb but the Bible did not say that he believed the Bible said that John believed Peter turned and he said to John and Andrew let's go back fishing and now Peter it's Easter morning and Jesus is risen, April Fool. Perhaps the April Fool is Thomas. You remember him? The one with a PhD from Jerusalem Institute of Technology. Thomas thought he was so smart and he was the one who can, who has deductive reasoning Yes, one from two leaves one. Two plus two equals four. Two and two is not 22. He was the intelligent one. He prided himself on his knowledge of the visible world. He delighted in understanding how things worked and he could figure them out. That's why I think he's an engineer. And engineers give you a little talk sometimes. Hard to please people. He might have been a physicist. Who knows? But he was a curious fella. He believes there's a natural explanation for everything. And when Jesus talked about going to prepare a place for them, it was this scholarly fellow who stood up and said, we don't know where you're going. Remember him in John chapter 14. But we don't know whither thou goest. How can we know the way? But his question gave Jesus an opportunity to tell them, I am the way in verse 6 of John chapter 14 the truth and the life no man comes to the father but my me so when his colleagues asserted that Jesus was alive because remember they did not believe when Mary of Magdala came to them first and because she was not a woman of deep integrity and they still didn't trust her so she she came and she told them you know I saw the Lord Jesus I think Mary must have been the first apostle because she was the first one sent by Jesus, the risen Savior. She was the first one to see him and she was the first messenger to be sent by Jesus. So I think we could call her the first apostle. I won't refrain to call her the first apostle because that's the criteria. She met the criteria. She saw the risen Lord and she was sent by him as a messenger. They didn't believe her. So when his colleagues asserted that Jesus was alive, that they heard that he was alive, or that they saw him because he had walked into the room uh, with them and, and he appeared and he disappeared. So they told Thomas, you know, Jesus was here. But he just walked through the closed door. He said, there you go again. Where, where have you ever seen anything like that? The academic and the scientific. So he says, unless I see him with my eyes, unless I push my finger in the wound in his hand, unless I can put my hand in his side, I won't believe. And now, Thomas, 
it's Easter. And Jesus is arisen. April Fool. This morning, friends, let's take it home. Application. Application. Perhaps the greatest fools today are us. Much of the world believes we are cracked anyway. Completely foolish. Who need Jesus and religion of some uh, emotional crutch? It's like, remember once I was in a crowd of investors and I was talking about Jesus and this guy who claims to be an atheist stood up and says, oh foolishness, that's only faith. But Christians these days tend to talk what they don't actually practice or believe. They talk that God is mighty and sovereign and all-powerful, but they don't believe that he can heal them. Some churches don't believe in healing anymore. Some churches don't believe in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Some people believe that we take this commitment too seriously. We are following his teachings. We obey his word. And we regard it by many this morning as fools. April fools. Perhaps there is another sense in which we are April fools. Because we claim to believe as though we don't. We affirm a belief in the resurrection of Christ. But we are not quickened by the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. We are dead. We are buried. We don't act alive as Jesus Christ is alive. With the quickening spirit that raised him from the dead. Now sometimes you wish you could just poke Christians with a spiritual needle and give them a dose of heavenly vitamins so they can get the energy to praise God. We act as though Jesus was still in the tomb cold and decaying. We speak it with our mouths, but in our hearts, we don't believe. So why bother? We are indeed fools. Now, friends, it's Easter morning. Jesus is risen from the dead. And we are to rejoice with an untranslatable joy. Yes. A joy that cannot be translated by human intellect. A joy that can only be expressed from experience. Yes. Jesus is alive. I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to end it. But I'll be a fool for Jesus any day. The greatest fool is Jesus Christ himself. What are you saying, Pastor? He's the fool of Easter. He's the trickster, as it were. Ask any Islamic person. He's the one who switched and got a look-alike to go on the cross. According to them. 
<laughs> He's the trickster. He's the one who called the devil's bluff. In the greatest jest of all times. He was the greatest poker player. Satan said, I raised the ante. <laughs> Your boy Judas is going to deny you and you're going to be caught and you're going to go to Pontius Pilate and you're going to work out a thing. Well, first he got Judas. And Judas said, well, you know, they can't take Jesus. I've seen him disappear before. <laughs> Yeah, this man will call down angels and destroy all of them and I'm going to end up rich and those poor <clears throat> fools. Those poor fools are going to end up with nothing. But Judas, as he watched them take Jesus, as he went and he kissed him, as if he was in a circus. But to his amazement, they said, we come to see Jesus. Of Nazareth. Why are you here? We come for Jesus of Nazareth. He says I am. He declared. His deity. And his Godship. He says I am. And the Bible says. They all fell back. They all fell back. Then he said, no, no, come. And Judas felt so stupid. He ran, he says, I have betrayed innocent blood. April Fool. But even during Jesus' ministry, he acted in foolish ways, according to most contemporary observers. He has chewed a comfortable lifestyle. He chose friends like tax collectors, hookers, lepers, fishermen, poor and needy people. There were no CEOs among his innocence, his, his inner circle. There were no known politicians in his inner circle. There were no rich men in his inner circle. As a matter of fact, he really shunted away what we call angel investors. A young man came to him very wealthy and said, how can I get into your group? Uh -huh. yeah. That's right. How can I get into your group? Jesus says, do you know the laws? He says, I've kept them since I was a little boy. Jesus said, you lack one thing. The Bible says, Jesus looked at him and loved him. And said to him, you lack one thing. Go sell all that you have and give it to the poor. The guy looked at him and said, this guy is weird. He went away grieved. He knew there is power in being somebody. But there is truth in being a nobody. Yes. He adopted. He, 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 the truth was part of him. He was truth. And he knew that power emerges from truth. He chose weakness instead of strength. He chose vulnerability instead of aggressiveness. <coughs> he chose truth instead of practicality. Honesty instead of influence. He stuck his fingers in the eyes of religious authorities and often seemed to be so deliberately setting himself up as a bait for those with higher power to kill him. And then they did. But this morning, thanks be to God, death could not hold him. A 
and the grave could not contain him. On Easter Fool's Day, God made the foolish. He made foolish the wisdom of the world according to 1 Corinthians chapter 120. Jesus was God's fool. A stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Greek. He was God's fool whereby God reconciled the world unto himself in 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 19. Today Jesus is alive. He who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross disregarding its shame and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. It was Jesus who emptied himself and took the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death on a cross. Pretty foolish it would seem, but this is not the end of the story. This is not the end of the story, saints. And you too, if you become a fool for Jesus, you too will be exalted. You too will be taken from this place of torment and hurt and depression and repression and racism and everything that affects the human race. We too will be brought to a place where there is no more pain sorrow. No more heartaches. No more pain. No more cancer. No more arthritis. No more of those things. The Bible says because he was obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross, God has also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every other name so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. On this Easter Fool Sunday Perhaps this is what we have an opportunity to do. As fools for Christ. As God's fools. We can come and say. Lord I humbly submit my whole heart to you. I come as a living sacrifice. You died sacrificially that I will not have to die. So I come as a living sacrifice, giving my living days, my hours, my time, my wealth, my health, everything to you, Jesus. I am a living sacrifice, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee. Thank you, Lord. O Lamb of God, Amen. I come. Amen. I'd rather be a fool for Jesus than anything else. Satan made me a fool years ago. He told me that drugs, ganja, and white rum, and everything else would be the answer. That I could find answer in everything but Jesus. I too looked at Christians as fools. They dress up, go to church every Sunday morning. Some of them were poor. They had nothing. But they had that one dress, that one suit. They never had to take it to the cleaners, Pastor Lord. They would wash their suit. Right there in their tub, in their bath pan. And they would hang it out and it would dry. 
But they would go to church every Sunday morning. And we sometimes would mock them. Look at those fools, those hypocrites. Here's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. For we see our calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world, the things which are despised. But God hath God chosen, yea, the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of God. This morning, continue to be a fool for Jesus. Yes, you will be mocked. You will be jeered for your faithfulness. When you're faithful to God, when you keep coming to church, and when you keep doing God's work, people attach all sorts of names to you. But remember, you serve an everlasting God who will reward you as he rewarded his son. He says, your name is in a little egg-like stone that only he knows. He has a place for you around the throne of glory. He came once and he's coming again. Jesus is alive. We don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. Amen. This is the hope of the Christian. Face to face shall I behold him. Far beyond the starry sky. Face to face in all his glory. We shall see him by and by. God bless you. I am <coughs>
Jesus, that on a day just like this, the first day of the week, God raised you from the dead. And your word says, if we believe that the Father raised you from the dead, if we believe it in our heart and confess it with our mouth, we shall be saved. So Lord, we thank you for that resurrection morning. Yes. The world changed and all the practices of the world changed because you rose from the dead. Yes. So we thank you today and we give you glory, honor, dominion and power because it all belongs to your name. Yes. We ask that with that resurrection power that quickened you from the dead that you would quicken our hearts, our minds and our souls this morning. That we may go forth from here Praising your name and giving you glory, honor, dominion, power. Because it belongs to you. We trust you now for the miraculous among us. For restoration of health. For restoration of finances. For restoration of strength. Yes. For restoration this morning, God. Wherever we need it in our lives. For harmony in our families. For peace in our lives. We ask you, God, with that resurrection power, that you would await these wonderful gifts yes. in our lives. We trust you now, and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Just grab your hymn books right where you are, 358. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future.
Corinthians chapter 11, the institution of the Lord's Supper. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Let us break bread together.
the Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and he broke it and he gave thanks eternal God and our Heavenly Father today Lord we take this symbol of your broken body you say do this as oft as you do it in remembrance of me Lord we remember you today we remember you that you gave your life that you were beaten with many stripes that your flesh tore from your bones that you were open Lord God the veil was open which is your body and because of your stripes the stripes you received we are made whole so as we eat this today Lord may it be a source of faith for everyone and may we be made whole in Jesus name we pray amen eat ye all of it let us drink the cup today supper he took the cup heavenly father and our sovereign lord father we thank you for your foreordained plan we worship you for your purpose and your goodness on earth your son our lord jesus bled and died for our sins that we may have life the transfer has taken place the sin of the world has been bared upon the son and the righteousness of God is on the believers. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, for your perfect plan, which is life itself. Bless us and guide us according to your spirit and your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Drink ye all. Okay. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This time we'll take the benevolence offering. Give it in love. 
Store it above. Give it with a willing heart. Give it in love. Store it above. Give it with a willing heart. You've got to give it in love. Store it above. Give it with a willing heart. You've got to give it in love. Store it above. Give it with a willing heart. You've got to give it in love. Store it above. Give it with a willing heart. Sing it again. Give it in love. Store it above. Give it with a willing heart. You gotta give it to love. Give it in love. Store it above. Store it above. Give it with Give it with a willing heart. You got to give it in love. Store it above. Store it above. Give it with a willing heart. You got to give it in love. Store it above. Give it with a willing heart. You gotta give it in love. You got to give it in love. Store it above. Store it above. Please stand. Give it with a willing heart. You got to give it in love. Store it above. Give it with a willing heart. Father God and our sovereign Lord, Lord Jesus, Father, that you would bless these humble gifts. Father, that you would bless all those who gave and all those who wanted to give, that you may bless and further your kingdom here at 208th Street in Jamaica. Father, that you would give us the means and a way according to your righteousness to go out and win souls for your kingdom, that people would be blessed, that they would know the love of God and come into your church rejoicing. Bless us and guide us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please grab your hymn books and turn to hymn number 368. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today.
God and our Heavenly Father, we thank you for life. We thank you for the life that comes from the risen Lord. And we pray that this week, Lord, we will manifest our risen selves to our neighbors, to our friends, just like how you manifested your risen self to your Savior, to your disciples, and to the 500 and the many more who saw you. Lord, we pray that this week we will manifest our risen selves to others, that they may see you in us, that they may know that because you live, they can live also. We trust you now and leave ourselves entirely in your care as we separate one from another, but not from you. We give you all the glory and the honor and the praise that's due to your name. Please raise your hands for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and the Lord give you peace now, henceforth, and forevermore. God bless you. Take Jesus with you. Have a happy Easter. Please, please take some of the...